Hello everyone, let's take a look at this Likud problem. It's a follow-up of Likud 236. So, um, and it's also a locked question. So let's take a look at the problem. Okay, the problem is uh, given the root of a binary tree, we need to return the lowest common ancestor of two given nodes P and Q. If either node P or Q does not exist in the tree, return non pointer. All values of the nodes in the tree are unique. So the biggest difference like, between this pro problem and the LICO 236 is in 236, the node P and Q say, are always exist in the tree, but for this problem, P or Q may not exist. So that's the biggest difference. So given two nodes, we need to find the lowest common ancestor. In this example, P is five, Q is one. So lowest common ancestor is three. In this example, um, P is five, Q is four. So lowest common ancestor is five. In third example, P is five, Q is 10. 10 um, does not exist in this tree. So we need to return non pointer. Okay, so this is constraints. P, P is not Q. Okay, as I mentioned previously, uh, there's a sim sim similar question, you call 236, there is common ancestor over penetrate one. So if you haven't practiced this problem, you should practice that problem first. Okay, let, let's first, um, Recall the Likud 236. Let's see how to solve Likud 236 first. So for Likud 236, since P and Q are always, uh, always exist in the tree, so there are always two nodes. For example, in here, um, P is six, Q is four. The lowest common ancestor is five. Let's see how to get five. So node four tells this parent uh, four and like for node two, only one of the nodes like return something. Seven gives non pointer. Node four give four, so two will return four. Node six will return six, and in node five it finds there's something in left children and something in right children. Then node five knows that I'm the common ancestor, so node five will return five to three. So for node three. Like one of these children return something, so no, no, we just return what it, it is, return five. Okay, so that's a good for you. So as uh, as long as we saw a green node, P, which means it's PLQ, we just re return it. Otherwise, for a node, uh, like node five, if there's something in the left part, something in the right part, we just return root, return the node itself. Otherwise, like for something like node two, only one of the child uh, returns something. So it just return what it is. Okay, for this example, uh, in node five, we just find it's PLQ, then we just return five immediately. We don't need to get a uh, recursive call left children and right children. And in the right part, well, node one returns down pointer to node three. So in node three, it just return five. Okay, so far so good. This is solution for the code 236. Okay, and this is the solution. You know, um, it does not work for this problem since P and Q does not always exist. Let's say this, this example, let's assume P is five, Q is 10. So Q is not uh, in the tree. If we are using um, the solution of the code 236, we know uh, five will, will return, node five will return five, node five to three, and the node one will return non pointer to node three. So no, node three will just return node five, but we know we shall return non pointer here. So uh, we cannot reuse that solution. So first, uh, in order to solve the code uh, 1644, uh, says in order to solve this problem, we have. Uh, we come up with the first solution, two paths. In first pass, we need to check if the tree contains node P and node Q. If the tree does not contain node P or node Q, we shall just return on pointer. Otherwise, in second pass, we can just run the code 236 code. Since P and Q do exist in my tree, so I can reuse the code. 
but this solution requires two paths. Let's see how can we improve it to one pass. Okay, let's assume um, we'll not only return the, like the, the node, but we also return a count. So count means how many P or Q I have saw uh, so far. So for node five, it will return node five, count is one to node three. Node one will return on pointer, count is zero. Then in node three, it will return a node five and count one. In my main function, I will check the count. If the count is smaller than two, I will just return now. Otherwise, I will just, uh, if, if the count is two, I will return the node. Okay, let's take a look at this example. Node four will return four one to node two. Node seven will return non zero to node two. Then node two will return four one to node five. Node six return non zero to node five. Node five will return node five. Two to node three. Since uh, we know says count one and node five is also a PLQ, so node five will, will return count two to three, and switch will just return five two. And in my main function, I find that the count is two, so I know P and Q do exist. So I just return the node here. So the biggest difference is um, even it's a green node. Um, previously, we don't recursive call the left children and right children. We just return immediately. But for this problem, there might be PLQ on the under left, left part or right part. We need to get the count. So we always have two recursive calls, left part, right part. So the code looks like this. In my main function, I get my result. If, if the count is smaller than two, I will return on pointer since P and Q uh, at least uh, one of P and Q uh, does not exist in the tree. If the count is two, I will just return the node. Okay, in my DFS function, um, if count node is non-pointer, I will just return non-pointer zero. Then I will request it called the left children and the right children. And if my count node is P or Q, I will just return my count node and I need to get the correct count. Since count node is P or Q, so we have one here then plus the count from left part and the right part. Okay, if there's something in my left part and something in my right part, then we know the count node is a common ancestor. So we just return count node and the count is two. Otherwise we just try to return the, um, like return what it says, just return the side that has something. Okay, that's it. Thanks.